Four people are dead at 17 hospitals. Susan Kelleher with our top story. Shut down and boarded up, a Jamaican restaurant where a shooting spree killed four people, injured 18. The shooting turned a birthday party into a bloodbath. Shots rang out on the dance floor early Saturday morning. Today, two days after the massacre, neighboring businesses fear retaliation from a Jamaican posse. You never know what can happen. You never know who might come by and want to retaliate from what happened. You nervous about a possible retaliation? Yes. Mary Hopper is so nervous, she's closing her store early tonight. Survivors of the gun battle so terrified, cops are keeping their identities a secret. Many fear if a Jamaican posse did this, talking to police is asking for trouble. It's very clear to anybody that was there that these people, whoever they may be, will shoot. And they're really not very concerned with whom they shoot when they start shooting. FDLE's Caribbean Crime Unit is actively searching for suspects by computer. Based on witness statements, they punch in names of posse members, hoping to locate possible suspects. One investigator says this shooting is a textbook example of how the posse does business. Investigators say at least one of the people gunned down here appeared to be an intended target. His body was riddled with bullets, but he managed to stagger over to those bushes where he fell to his death. But they say most of the people killed or injured in this bloody massacre were just innocent bystanders. Gunned down in a shower of bullets, the so-called shower posse has become famous for. At this point, investigators don't know a lot. The weapons were semi-automatics. The shooting broke out on the dance floor. The suspects are four black males, 21 or younger. But the motive is still a mystery. The suspects still at large and very likely hiding behind several different identities. If they're in the country illegally, you may have no record of that. If, uh, if they have good fictitious identification, you may have a problem tracking down their real identification. We're back now live at the scene where investigators have released this reminder from Crime Stoppers. If you have any information leading to the arrests of any of these gunmen, you could receive a cash award of up to $1,000. Now, one investigator I talked to today said they are getting so many different descriptions of these gunmen, it's almost impossible to put together a composite. But the good news is some witnesses are apparently talking to police. Reporting live from Northwest Date, I'm Susan Kelleher. A man is shot and killed after a fight over a bicycle. It happened early this morning at Northwest Northeast 2nd Avenue and 26th Street in Miami. Police say a teenager saw Jorge Medina riding his bike and asked him for it. Medina allegedly told the teen he'd sell it to him for $20. Police say they argued. The teen allegedly left and came back with an Uzi and fired more than 15 shots. One of them killed Medina. Tonight, the 17-year-old is charged with first-degree murder. A high-speed police chase through Northwest Day lands a police officer in a hospital. Miami Shores police say they began chasing a car that was stolen from a Publix on Biscayne Boulevard and 93rd Street. Metro Dade police then joined the chase. Soon after, the two suspects bailed out of the car. The police managed to catch up with them. Tonight, two are in jail. One officer is hurt. His leg was... Uh, possibly broken in the chase, he was taken to a local hospital. More today, they've got the teenager who shot and killed a man over a bicycle. This morning, two men got into an argument over a bicycle at Northwest 26th Street and 2nd Avenue. Then one of them came home and came back with an Uzi and used it. 32-year-old Jorge Medina was killed instantly. Cops arrested a 17-year-old right after that shooting. He is charged with first-degree murder. A man in West Palm Beach is charged with beating, slashing, and drowning his ex-girlfriend. He allegedly beat her with a pair of pliers, then drowned her in a bathtub while her 2-year-old daughter listened from another room. Cops say he cut her wrists and then his own. She was dead by the time cops got there. He lived and is being held without bond. Broward police now know the identity of a woman found beaten and tied with a belt Sunday morning. They called her Jane Doe, but tonight they know her name. It's Benita Kuhn. She is 45 years old, and she was found beaten, tied up, and carrying no ID at the side of a road west of Hollywood. Semi-conscious at the hospital today, Kuhn was able to tell police her name. She has a record of drug and prostitution arrests. Police are still looking for her attackers. Cops in Lauderhill say they've got an 84-year-old flasher on their hands. 
Harold Isaacs allegedly flashed kids as they walked by his house. When cops went to arrest him, they say he was watching TV in the nude, where anyone passing by could easily see him. Now Isaacs is charged with unnatural acts and exposing himself. A high-speed chase through North Dade. Cops in Miami Shore say they started chasing a stolen car outside the Publix on Biscayne Boulevard and 93rd Street. Metro Dade cops joined in and chased them to Northwest Dade, where the suspects bailed out of their car. But the cops got him. Now the two men are in jail. One cop got hurt. His leg was hurt during that chase. A home invasion in Northwest Dade and two kids are inside the house by themselves. Two masked gunmen busted into the house. A 12-year-old girl and her young brother were home all by themselves. The crooks put guns to their heads and the kids did exactly what they were told to do. So they put the gun out here and come from you move. I'm going to kill you and tell me where the gun's at. So we told them. The kids say they were scared, but they were not hurt. Cops should not have a tough time finding those crooks because the children say they live just down the street. In Detroit, a baby is fighting for his life tonight after being shot. Police say the one-year-old got a hold of his parents' gun and then shot himself by accident. He is in the hospital tonight. Now cops will decide if they're going to charge his parents in the shooting. Good evening, everyone. First at 11 o'clock tonight, a story that just gives you chills. Shots rang out during an armored car robbery outside a crowded Home Depot. Now, this is what happened. The security guard draws his gun and fires at his attackers, but misses. But a customer is caught in the crossfire. Nightcast reporter Kerry Sanders joins us live now from North Miami Beach. Kerry, this story on Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving Eve of all times, it just you can't believe that something like this could happen. It's horrendous. Photographer Rudy Marshall was the first on the scene here. When he arrived, he said it was mayhem. There were ambulances, there were fire trucks, there were uh, policemen all over the place. This is what we understand. That Wells Fargo armored truck is right out here. The guard is coming out with the night's receipts. He's got the satchel in his hand. As he is getting into the back, he's struck in the back of the head. Apparently, as he's going down and being repeatedly hit by one of two thieves, he pulls his weapon. As he takes his weapon, he shoots and apparently hit this innocent bystander. And as you said, this is so sad. Thanksgiving Eve, an innocent bystander is dead. Shot once in the chest and once in the throat, the victim is rushed by paramedics to a waiting ambulance. He was an innocent bystander, shopping at the Home Depot, picking up some extra chairs to put around the Thanksgiving dinner table when he stumbled onto the robbery. This Wells Fargo guard was walking out of the store with the night's receipts when he was jumped from behind. One of the thieves repeatedly hit the guard over the head. The guard pulled his gun and fired. He got confused, took his gun out and shot the wrong person. Standing by guy that was coming to buy something in the store. Police are unsure if the guard accidentally killed the bystander. They suspect the thieves may have also fired their guns. Yeah, there's two guys just walked up, I guess, from the Home Depot in there, and um, they attacked him. And they started beating on his head and... Um, the guard. What did they hit him with? Um, some kind of instrument. Uh, it was like um, just... Oh, because he was... He had his head. This unarmed security guard was working in the parking lot and drove up on the robbery. I mean, he was, he, you know, he's just coming from Home Depot, too. His wife walks over there. The victim's wife left the Home Depot in shock. Her husband had apparently come up to the store to buy a few last-minute items. With him at the Home Depot, their one-year-old son, a child confused and frightened by something he is too young to understand. Now, police have very little description other than to say that there were just two thieves that they were believed armed took off. Other than that, they do not know much about them. There were two guards with this armored truck, the one that was carrying the satchel, the other one that was inside the truck in the driver's position. And apparently the rules of the way it works is while he is seated inside the truck, if there is an attack, he is not to get out and come out and draw his weapon and apparently shoot. And apparently Wells Fargo has a good reason for that, although tonight it's hard to get an understanding. Apparently that's a system that they have in place from previous attacks. So nonetheless, we had the one guard who was out here, pulled his weapon, and by all indications from what witnesses are saying, when that guard pulled his weapon and fired, he hit an innocent bystander. Just a terrible story here this Thanksgiving Eve. Tony? Absolutely awful. Our prayers go out to the family. Uh, let me just ask you again, any shred of evidence at all that we can look for to apprehend the two thieves. I have asked police tonight and they're going on what witnesses tell them and they just, they don't have any descriptions. They just know that they were two men 
And, I mean, that could be, as you know, that's, that's just not a description. They just jumped in a car and they took off, and it's just terrible. They have looked into the possibility of whether this may be connected to other attacks at other Home Depots, but it does not appear that this is related to any other robbery attempts or successful robberies at other Home Depots. Okay, Carrie, thank you very much. Six. Five people are arrested and charged with the beating death of a University of Miami medical student. Good evening. Police say this man died because of his race. He is Vietnamese, and while he was at a party last night, a fight broke out. Police say other partygoers were beating him up simply because he is Vietnamese. Channel 7's Carlos Harrison with our top story. Today, they're charged with hating, with beating a man to death just because he's Vietnamese. The victim, Luyen Phan Nguyen, a second year pre-med student at the University of Miami, beaten to death by as many as 12 attackers. They beat him so severely that his en he uh, became unconscious and was not breathing. Uh, he ended up being airlifted to the Broward General Hospital, placed on life support systems, but, and he uh, died. 5 30 this morning today five of the alleged attackers are charged with second degree murder brad mills john liptak michael jamerson michael Pramato, with the confederate flag and semper fi tattooed on his arm he just got back from marine boot camp last week also charged chris anderson saturday night they were together here at a party in coral springs police say the party was here in E203, and it was there in E203, police say, that someone made a comment to Nguyen about his being Asian. He said, meet me outside, and police say they did. The fight began here. Excuse me, Danny. Did you know Luke very well? The people who hosted the party don't want to talk about it. No one is glad to speak for it. Neither did friends of the alleged attackers. But apartment resident Carmen Davila and her husband were among the first to reach Nguyen Saturday night. My husband see all guys running, running, and he go and check it out. The boy is in the floor. Is is study will never happen here because he's good, good play here. The men chased Nguyen into this grassy area, then pounded him until he stopped breathing. People who knew him couldn't believe it. Lou, he was just a basically a nice guy, you know, never, he never, uh, I, don't, I don't really know how to describe him, you know, he's just, just really smart and never, never did anything to anyone. Nguyen never came out of a coma. Carlos Harrison, Channel 7 News, Coral Springs.